Hello, this is Matt Bergman, and you are listening to the Punk Rock Libertarians podcast, episode 19. We are oh, back yeah. in the house with the motherfucking documents. Yeah, Alexis. You got the documents, right? I got them. Did you, you bring them? Okay, you remember to bring the documents, dude. I got the documents. We're going to roll up those documents. We're going to smoke them, and we're going to get <laughs> high as fuck. What's up, Jared? How's it going? Oh, uh, it's going good, man. Yeah, man. Cool. So uh, so you were at an, another party this weekend, huh? I was, dude. And yeah. we had... Um, we had a little incident with the police. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were just partying in a backyard, campfire, some speakers. Did you guys have uh, Natty Ice? <sighs> Not Natty Ice, no. Did you bring her GameCube? No, I did dildos. bring Black Dildos. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, okay. With um, some Axe body spray. Mm -hmm. Like a can and a half. Um, That'll get it done. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so anyways, yeah, like, uh, we were just, you know, it wasn't super crazy. Um but then all of a sudden, uh, someone's like, dude, th there's cops out front. So my friend who owns a house, he uh, he goes out front to talk to him. Comes back like a half hour later. Um, and he's like, yeah, apparently one of the neighbors called the cops with a complaint. Actually, it wasn't even a neighbor. It was someone that was like staying with a neighbor. And they called the cops because and, – and their complaints were a noise complaint and that we were – that someone was parked wrong. So this is like, this is like a um, C clearly a, a reason to justify violence, right? Um, yeah, I mean it was like just uh, there were some shoulders on the road and people were parked there. But so, anyways, the cops showed up and they talked to my <laughs> buddy and basically they were like, "Well, this is total bullshit. Um, no one's parked wrong." They walked around to the back and there was barely any music going on. Like the subwoofers had already been turned off. And, uh, yeah, so the cop was like, so the cop went, went to the lady and the lady was like, yeah, they're not necessarily parked wrong, but I, I'm having trouble like backing out. So the cop just like apparently was just shining his light on the lady and like guiding her out of the parking lot, basically just like mocking her. And so, I mean, you know, Hey, there's some cops out there who aren't total assholes who will recognize when, you know, people are just bullshitting. But the point that it made me think of is why would you resort to calling the police over something like that? I mean, this this lady, I think it was a lady, she could have easily just come over, just said, hey, you know, someone's parked wrong. I'm having trouble getting out of my driveway. Can you yeah. just move your car? Or if we were being noisy, which we weren't, she could have said, hey, do you guys mind turning it down? Yeah. She which we would have. I mean, we were all like, you know, we're all in our 20s. She wouldn't even have to come over. She could just, you know, sit in her kitchen, use her rotary phone and call <laughs> over, you know, and say, hey. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's like, why would you want to escalate the situation to that point where, I mean, God forbid we had a fucking dog running around. That cop could have just showed up and shot the dog. <laughs> um, So, I mean, yeah, like. Uh, it's it's just this whole thing with people not taking responsibility for their own life or their own surroundings and, and just taking action and saying, okay, you know, there's a there's an issue I have with another person. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna just solve this myself. Yeah. And nine ninety nine times out of a hundred, it's it's gonna it's gonna work. I mean, yeah, if it was like a bunch of like high school kids partying, and they you know you know flicked you off and said to you know, go fuck yourself. Yeah, maybe I could see getting the police involved because you don't have any other options. But, I mean, you're just talking about a casual party with, like, a bunch of 20-year-olds. Or, not 20-year-olds, 20-somethings. And, uh, yeah. So that's my little weekend story. How about you guys? Yeah, um, I don't know. I was pretty lame. I had tickets to go to see Desa Parasitos last night in D.C. And, I don't know. I, like... Like you decided I, to just wank off instead? I decided to just stay home. And maybe that's like, you know, getting old. But Sounds uh, like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially since I already had the tickets. You know, I'm a big fan of the band. And, uh, I mean, the band changed my life. I like them that much, you know? Mm. It's like when their first album came out in, uh, I think it was 2003, like I listened to it every day for like two years. 
I, I just thought that, wow, this is really cool. Nothing else has came out, out like this before. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of had their own thing. And yeah, I really uh, dig that first album. I totally. haven't heard the new one yet. I've, I've got it, you know, like, I, and I think it's uh, really cool. I just haven't really uh, delved into it yet, hardcore. You know, I haven't listened to it a whole bunch. Yeah. So, I don't know. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, I do think it's cool. I wouldn't say anything bad about it, you know. And, uh, anyways, so then, uh, yeah, uh, th- that was about it for me. Earlier, I went to uh, the record store and I found uh, a, f- a copy of uh, 15's um, The Choice of uh, New Generation on vinyl. And I'm really psyched about that. You know, I got it at a great price, like 15 bucks. And 15 bucks for 15. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I wonder if uh, Tony was trying to be ironic. I got that at Celebrated Summer Records in Baltimore. And it, it's totally the best record store around if you're looking for punk rock. Totally. It's my favorite period because I'm mostly just looking for punk rock. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. So, Alexis, did you tell us about your weekend, dude? Um, Nothing too exciting. Nothing just, too uh, exciting going on there? I was telling Jared I got my bike fixed, and uh, it's been sitting in my basement for about a year. So I finally uh, got it fixed last Saturday. I took it on a, I don't know, like 20-some mile bike ride around, cruising around Baltimore, and that was about it. And then Ubered last night. That's about it. Exciting times in Baltimore. How'd you, how did Uber go? You know, some bachelorette parties. Yeah, there were some ladies. Some ladies. It was a wide. It was a wide variety. Um, people in town visiting, first time Ubering. I don't know. It was a wide variety. Right. Uh, there was this one kid though. This was this was this. He he was calling me a Jew. Yeah, he what? was very like this kid. So all right. Yeah, he was just like. Just being obnoxious, like, and uh, his buddy, so they, they get a ride, and apparently there was a show, and they got kicked out of the Sublime show, I don't know, I don't know what their band is nowadays, but, um, so I get this uh, request. Sublime with Rome? Or whatever. Yeah, something, and it, so there was, like, this wide variety of people in that area of town, so this this guy uh, requests a ride, and uh, he gets in, and his buddy gets in the back seat, and uh, apparently they got kicked out of the show, but it, it seemed like his buddy in the back was pretty drunk, and he just kept saying, like, Oh, you look Jewish. He kept telling, and he just kept saying it. And his buddy <laughs> kept telling him, like, "Dude, this is our driver. He's get, he's like doing us a favor. He's giving us a ride home. Like, just shut up." Like, yeah. it got to the point where, like, "Hey, man, just be cool." And he just like kept saying it and kept bringing it up, and just was like, "I was," he's like, "You're really pissing him off, man. You're pissing off our driver." And he's, he kept like, <laughs> he was just sloppy drunk, and it was yeah. only like ten o'clock, and it got to the point where I was like, "Look, do you have like a swastika on his forehead?" I don't know, man. He was just like, he was just. He was just drunk and yeah. just trying to, I don't know, thought he was funny and he just kept, I don't know. I don't yeah, know yeah. what his deal was, but his friend obviously was embarrassed because he told his friend, he's like, get out of the car. And like, as I'm dropping him off and then his friend basically was just like, hey, really apologize. I'm sorry, my friend. And and then when he got out, like he, he, as I'm pulling away, like you could just tell, like he was just like, dude, that was totally inappropriate. You're a drunken asshole. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. So it was kind of a, that was, that was about the, the low light of it, but um. I don't know. Typical Saturday night in Baltimore. Yeah, so uh, did you guys watch the debates? I watched some uh, uh, highlights or lowlights. Okay. So so we do a weekly podcast about discussing politics, <laughs> and, and you couldn't watch there, the debates. There was a debate? I was doing <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, granted, we don't just discuss politics, but, yeah. but whatever. Okay, so... Anyways, like I got home from work at like uh, nine thirty or whatever, and I believe the debate started at nine. And then I'm reading. I, I go get online and I Google like how to watch the debates. And then the first thing that comes up is some like I think it was a Mediate article, and it says, uh, "Well, Fox is making it hard to watch the debates because you have to like log in with your cable provider." Did you hear about that? So it was only on Fox News, or uh, uh, apparently. But then you know I go to foxnews.com. And then I didn't log in with a cable provider because I don't have fucking cable. So, but you know, I'm just sitting on there, and then eventually they they just start playing video of them. Yeah. So for uh, apparently I didn't need to log in, but I thought that was kind of fucked up at first because it's like, you know, I mean, you would you would think that uh you know a political debate you'd want to have it like open to where as many people would see it, and you would have to log into cable to watch it. Yeah, or just like live streaming off your website or something. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, yeah, I know in YouTube. years past, that's what they did. I, I'm guessing that they wanted to do that at first, and maybe they caught some slack and they switched it. Maybe. But, uh, I mean, that's one thing I, I couldn't understand. It just started playing for me. So, anyways, I watched, like, the last half of the, the debates, and then um, 
really it started pissing me off and i started to just get mad at myself for even watching it and then <laughs> See, that's um, why i didn't watch it but yeah. it's like then, do i go out and get drunk at the bar or do i stay here and yeah do yeah, i watch this two hours or do i sit well, on dude, the porch i, I had i had grow. like mixed feelings about it well, as like throughout the night then um you know i was also i'm always watching my youtube sub- subscriptions and uh, i see stuff coming up on youtube from like earlier in the night with uh you know, Ron Paul went, uh, you know, gave uh, Trump some shit. He gave uh, Christie some you shit. Rand Paul? Yeah, sorry, Rand Paul. And yeah. then, he, yeah. Um, it, 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 it'd be a lot that, cooler that was, if it was uh, Ron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just fucking showed up. a lot cooler like, if it suck was. My dick. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, see, I'm seeing these videos and I'm like, wow, you know, that, 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 was, that was pretty kick ass. And, uh, you know, apparently Rand Paul was giving, like, given, like, uh, I believe it was like half the time of Trump. I don't know. He Not even. Wasn't, he wasn't I, given like much time at all in the debate. I saw a chart and it showed like the actual speaking time. He was the the least, and Trump was the most. That I think oh, that's so, that is so surprising. Shocker, right? Yeah. I am uh, utterly flabbergasted. I can't believe that Fox News giving the least amount of time with someone with the last name of Paul. Shocker. Shocker. But uh, yeah, so like. And then, like, after that, um, and it's people are posting a show on Facebook, and it, it's, like, it's funny, because it, there's people even, like, anarchists that I know, and they're posting shit like, oh, like, 2016, it's going to be horrible with Donald Trump, you know? And it, it's just, like, dude, it's just as horrible as it is every time, you know? <laughs> yeah. it, it's, like, every it's time, you know, worse. we're left with with an asshole, you know? It's, it's like, you know, especially, I, I think, uh, the last two have been pretty unbelievable, you know, but I mean, at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I hated uh, Bill Clinton when, when he was in office, too. But I feel like as as time passes and you've got to deal with assholes that are like fresher in your memory, you begin to hate them more. But I mean, like, I remember when when even Clinton got elected, like it was 1992. And I'm like, oh, this is the end of the world. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. I thought it was going to be like like fucking horrible, you know. And uh, then, you know, uh, George Bush, it's like it was just so unbelievable that he got elected and he was so bad. And then you, well, just when you think it can't get worse, you got Obama. Now you've got fucking Trump. You know? I think it would just be hilarious. I think Trump Trump's all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's funny to see the, these these anarchists talking about it like like it's the end of the world and shit. It's like, dude, this is just, uh, you know, continuation of Par what, for the what we've been getting, you know. So then, you know, I went from at first being like really pissed off at myself for watching it. At the, as, as you know, I rationalize and I, you know, you I calm down. You research for the like, podcast. Yeah. Well, and that and I'm inter- interested, too, you know. And uh, I mean, I'd say this is probably the best time of year to talk to people about libertarianism. Yeah. You know, not just like, you know, what, whatever politicians you may or may not like, um, but even just uh, like the philosophy, you know, because I, I mean, this time of year, uh, this time every four years, you know, people are actually thinking and talking about these things. It's not just like football, you know. Right. That's so, true. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's a good time of year for us to spend the message. You know, it's probably our best time. I can speak for like uh, the Facebook page um, as like, you know, we, we've we've always uh, we've only been around for like five years. But I can tell you, we picked up a lot of steam around uh, the presidential debates and the election last time. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice. It'd be nice if we had like another Ron Paul running. I mean, Ron Paul's close, but it's not the same thing. Well, it's you know weird because I mean? it's like it ran. It's the same. Of course, Rand- we could talk a lot about Gary Johnson, but yeah, like to say Rand Paul's close. I don't know how close he is. It, it's basically uh, Rand Paul. I mean, I could argue him all day. There's some people that I respect that love him, and you know, I, I get the rationale, and I, I agree with the rationale to a point. You know, um, you know, it's just like uh, we said before. You know, uh, Ron's other son, Ronald, was uh, interviewed, and he said that there was no difference between uh, Ron and Rand as far as uh, you know their goals for like an ideal society. Their only difference was uh, how to get there. You know, and so maybe Rand looks at it like. You know, Ron tried and, you know, he failed because he didn't become president. But, uh, you know, of course, he succeeded in getting the message out. Whereas I think, you know, maybe Rand, you know, of course, he tries to make concessions and, and appeal to like a, a wider audience of people, which, you know, um, some of the appealing I like, you know, I like how he's like uh, he goes to Baltimore. He goes to uh, actually I'm not sure if he went to Baltimore or not, but no, um, he, did. Oh, yeah, he, he did. spoke okay. at the, uh, yeah, he did. He went to Ferguson. He went to Detroit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's like fucking, I mean, that's badass, dude. I mean, especially for like a Republican to do that. It's like, right. you know, what's ballsy. Fuck? Yeah. It's, it's badass, man. And, you know, I, th- I think that's that's fucking great, dude, because it's like fucking I, I think it, it it's it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, why don't more minorities support libertarians? 
Because a lot of them are trapped in the welfare system. Um, and but I mean, like, and that means voting for the Democrat. See, but I mean, I don't know about that, man. It's hard to I, run I against think, Santa Claus. Yeah, you know, I'd be, I'd be, I'd say if you pulled up a lot of numbers, I mean, not. I don't know. I mean, like, I've known. Minority, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's I, a lot of white people in the welfare system too. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, a good portion of the minority population, unfortunately, is is a, is a part of that cycle. But at the same time, there's a there's a, a great portion of those people who are not part of that cycle who are still, you know, like not libertarian who are still, you know, it seems to be primarily democratic. Well, yeah, because they're definitely not going to be Republicans. Well, that kind of brings up. Uh, you know what I mean? That kind of ties in what we're talking about, like why, <laughs> yeah, I, why it, it's totally. But I mean, but, it's but like no, li- why the libertarians le- though? I mean, nobody else, you know, campaigns harder for the in- individual, right? You know, we're all individuals; we all have the same rights. The individual is the smallest minority, so you know, if if you want, you know, civil rights, if you want equal rights for uh, minorities, you know, you're you're not going to find a better, you know, we should be recruiting minorities faster than we're recruiting anybody. I, I mean, wouldn't you agree? But that that's why it ties in with like why the 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 left and the Dems cannot stand Rand Paul so much is because and that's why the Republicans because they don't want him talking about civil liberties, the war on drugs, and et cetera. And he's trying to reach out to that demographic, and that's making both sides, uh, the the left and the right, scared to death of him because you know he there could be, you know he's discussing the issues that are like basically third rails for both parties. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily that they hear about the Libertarian Party and decide it's not for them. I just don't think they hear about it in the first place. Or not even the Libertarian Party, just the Libertarian philosophy. I mean, most people believe there's only two choices, you know? Yeah. So it's like, are they going to go with the Republican or are they going to go with the Democrat? And, but, you know, and it's just like the Democrats have a history of, you know, championing for minorities, supposedly. Or at least that's the propaganda. So that's who minorities will go for. And it just seems like every every four years in the presidential elections, n- n- the the uh, center, the basically most people know what's going on in the country, but it just seems like every four years they frame these issues. Like these are the, the most important issues on this side. These are the most important issues on this side. And in both uh, major parties and their debates, they talk about these "quote unquote" fabricated issues to just keep people divided and getting to the core issues. I mean, wouldn't you say what was discussed, Matt, during this GOP debate that you know probably wasn't discussed last year? That just seems to be every four years, or just like something new, and they never get to the core. Well, I mean, you know, the one thing that everybody's uh, you know kind of playing out in the media is that uh, you know Donald Trump admitted for the first time in a presidential debate that you know all these politicians are bots. Yeah. You know, well, and, Rand Paul accused him of being bought and he was basically like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I, I think he tried to say like he, he sent money to Rand, too. And, and you can prove that he didn't send any money to Rand. He was like bullshitting. You know? Oh, really? He didn't. Yeah. Did you say that Onion article? Like uh, it's something like uh, Bernie Sanders clearly bought by a school teacher who donated three hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <I saw> that. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Man, like it, it, it amazes me, man. Like uh, it's basically like. You know, I don't like to compare Bernie Sanders to Ron Paul, but I mean, you can obviously you can see the similarities. You know, it, it's basically like he's just like a more sincere member of the left. You know, well, I don't agree with his solutions. He does seem a little more sincere than most. And, you know, and he, he's, he's not afraid to say things. <laughs> yeah. Or he's, 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 he's not done. afraid to say he says more things than other people. <laughs> did you did you see the thing where he um like flip flopped on gun control? Like, originally he was, I believe he was actually originally, like, not for any gun control. Well, it doesn't shock me because you not, know, he's from Vermont. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Vermont's but constitutional then, But then carries. in a recent interview he was saying that he thinks essentially hey. that, like, any gun that's not used for hunting should be illegal. And now he's a Democrat running for president. Right. So <laughs> it's like, did he have, I mean, the thing is, like, I don't necessarily think flip-flopping is a bad thing if it's, if you change your mind based on reason and evidence. But if you change it based, based on pandering, based on pandering, that's where the problem lies. And so I don't I don't really like to use the term flip flopping, but it seems in this case, you know, it's not it might not necessarily be. Oh, I, I suddenly realized that guns are bad and 
or at least handguns are bad, you know. So I don't know that like stuff like that makes me question him. Also, like the fact that he's championing champ- championing a fifteen dollar minimum wage, but pays his interns twelve dollars an hour, <laughs> 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 kind of makes me question the guy's integrity a little bit. And I'm sure he has some like rationale for that, but yeah, that's definitely you know. <laughs> Plus, he has uh, serious problems with Uber. He was just uh, quoted uh, this past week that because it's unregulated, because, you know, the regulated cab industry has been so innovative over the past, you know. Yeah, so he was bitching about the fact that Uber is unregulated. Yeah, but he didn't really go into details about it. But wait, wait, it'll come out soon. Yeah, I mean, shit like that kind of scares me. It's like, why, why do you need to regulate fucking Uber? Yeah, you know what? It's it's doing just fine on its own. Yeah, yeah have I mean, have, have, have we had an Uber problem? I don't. You know, the biggest so. Uber problems that we've had are the government going after Uber. Yeah, or like people in France setting Uber cars on fire. Yeah, that seems to be the. Well, that's all just uh, you know, they 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 want to the monopoly to to exist and the licensing to exist. To, but right anyway. Oh man, so yeah. What else about back the to the baits? Yeah, okay. what else? What else you got? So yeah, man? like uh, Chris Christie still playing nine <laughs> eleven. You know, it, it's it's yeah, twenty fifteen, and you know it's cool. I mean, I think it, it's like uh, this is a positive thing that we saw there. You know, because uh, it's basically when uh, if if you remember in um, I believe it was uh, two thousand eight. You know, Ru- Rudy Giuliani, I believe. Um, he was saying, uh, you know, playing the nine eleven card, and then this is seven years later, and you know, and you had a little bit of, uh, you know, Ron Paul, you know, kind of just going after him, and you know, talking about blowback, and then you know, Giuliani basically called him like uh, called Ron Paul like a traitor, but pretty much, you know, <laughs> to retract and those statements immediately. Like it, it was a it was a lot bigger news, and it was kind of like negative towards Ron Paul. But at the same time, it's like as, as the media were kind of pointing it negative towards Ron Paul, it actually helped Ron Paul pick up steam, I would say, because, you, you know, I, I think I think Ron Paul, you know, like uh, basically one of the things that made him really popular was, um, you know, his outright um, like just like he was just in your face, anti military industrial complex, anti starting needless wars, you know. You know, he was only in favor of actual national national defense, which, you know, we've got a lot of national offense going on that, you know, most libertarians would argue is unwarranted. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, of course, with, with Rand, you know, he panders a little bit more. You know, he's, he's still not as big as a hawk, not as big of a hawk as, um, you know, anybody else in the race. But, um, y- you know, he's just not as... Uh, not as militant and not about not being militant as his father was, you know? Yeah. So, um, dude, I liked how Megyn Kelly was like ripping into Trump. That yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that's one thing I got to give, like actually everybody from Fox news seemed to be pretty hard on the candidates. Yeah. So, you know, like I give him that, I mean, they were giving him trouble and you know, Trump, I mean, he just, just comes off as like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say idiot because, I mean, he's got to be pretty smart to have gotten to where he was. But he does. He comes off as an idiot. He just comes off as a dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. He comes off as an asshole. Totally. But he's just all he's, he's doing the is the ultimate asshole. He's just playing to the lowest common denominator, which unfortunately makes up a large percent of the voting population. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Espe- you know, at least for like the Republicans. Pretty much. Pretty much. You know, so I mean, so he's playing to the whole, you know, fear of immigrants and, you yeah. know. That that whole thing, yeah. Like it's weird how how Trump is is reaching out to like so many people. You know, it, it seems like so many people just love him, and uh, it, it. I don't know, man. It it it, it is. It's just fucking weird. It, it's you know. I, I like the article that uh, John Vibes wrote, um, and uh, basically we aggregated it on uh, PRL. I forget where it appeared first. Uh, maybe anti media, but. Um, so he wrote this article and uh, he, it's basically like why Trump was the best, uh, why Trump is possibly the best presidential candidate ever, <laughs> yeah. you know? 
And it, it, he basically says, you know, like Donald Trump's like fucking ridiculous. Like, you know, could you imagine Donald Trump on the television every day telling you about the country? You know, I mean, you'd be in for more or less than George Bush. You know, if you th- thought George Bush sounded ridiculous. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You know, Donald Trump. And I agree with him as far as that. And then I, I actually I agree with this whole fucking article. Like, uh, I love John Vibes. He's a great guy. I feel like we're just brothers from well, another. His brother. position so, was that seeing that ridiculousness <laughs> would cause people to. Just realize how ridiculous the whole system is. Yeah, and so the collapse like, will like come Donald sooner. Trump, Donald Trump is like the ends of statism, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. And also, of that you know, he could he could probably bring the the whole system like crashing. You know, yeah. He could yeah def- but it, the thing is, I mean, that part that's a good point. But I don't know, man. I mean, if you don't think the system is ridiculous after George Bush. I mean, wh- how much worse can you get as far as having an idiotic president? I don't know, but you know, know. maybe we should find out. <laughs> maybe you know, we should. It, it's basically oh, for it, Trump. It's, it's the anarchist case for Trump, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I, dude, I fucking despise Trump, you know. But I mean, voting for Trump, I mean, it's almost like, uh, um, who's somebody ridiculous? So, Matt, is this for? kind of an endorsement? It's, it's almost like voting for like Mickey Mouse or something. You know what I mean? Or it's like voting for Vermin Supreme if Vermin Supreme could actually get elected. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, Matt, this sounds like an endorsement. Are you? S- no, I mean, it's basically, it's just one way of looking at it, you know. I think... Are you going to cover up your uh, Ron Paul bumper sticker with a Trump <laughs> I don't have 2016. I don't have a Ron Paul bumper sticker. I did, but then that car got totaled oh, in the parking yeah, lot yeah. when I, I was not inside of that it. had my sticker on it. Oh, man. But, so, what about you guys? Are you are you guys, like, uh, what are you registered as? I think I'm registered libertarian. Yeah. So what are you registered as, Alex? Um, still Republican, I think, since 2012, since trying to vote for Ron Paul in a primary. Yeah, that that was my whole thing. I, I switched to Republican and Ron Paul. I, I, re- I switched to Republican in 2012 to vote for Ron Paul in the primaries. And, um, you know, in 2008, I thought about switching, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think I thought, like, uh, you know, he's not going to win anyways. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, see, but I, I did it, the it, same thing, but I switched back to Libertarian after so that, that so that they could get more numbers, so they could get more ballot access. Well, yeah, I mean, I see the point in that, but um, as far as I know, you know, we weren't, we weren't concerned with losing ballot access in Maryland, so I didn't think that it was a big deal that I switched back. Oh, okay. And, you know, I thought, like, well, I can't vote in a libertarian primary, so I might as well vote, Yeah. you know. Uh, no, I if, mean, there's, if there is a libertarian-leaning uh, Republican, you know, I could vote there. And, you know, there was talk about Rand Paul. Basically, um, you know, even back in 2012, there's talk about Rand Paul got coming for 2016. Yeah. So, you know, I figured, eh, you know, we'll, we'll just see where it goes, you know. Yeah. And, I might switch back just and vote for him. Yeah, so I'm I'm <laughs> definitely going to go and vote for Rand in the primary. Um, well, at least you know that, that's that's what I think. You know, uh, unless uh, unless he does something to horribly disappoint me in the meantime. But uh, you know, I'd probably just vote for him in the primary. And in, as far as the general election, um, you know, I think I I don't foresee him winning the primary. I I don't foresee them letting him win win the primary. But um, you know, if he were to, I'd I'd probably just say, you know, fuck it, let let's try it. You know, he's like uh, the the most libertarian person that we could probably ever get elected as president. You know. Yeah. Or I might just vote for Gary Johnson. I don't know. You know, because I I definitely like Gary Johnson. Gary doesn't pander as much, but you know, Gary's not in a position where he would have to pander as much. You know. He's, right. He's basically giving speeches in a forest and there's nobody around to listen, you know. <laughs> and I mean <laughs> Or in an echo chamber. <laughs> with that being said, I fucking love Gary Johnson. He's fucking awesome, you know. But uh I don't know. I, you know, part of me thinks Gary Johnson would actually probably secretly vote for Rand. <laughs> I think he said in an interview that he would vote for Rand. Uh, um I don't know, man. We should probably uh check that out. <laughs> yeah. I actually yeah, I saw it in an article and then I looked it up. I mean, it was in some sort of, it was in a specific context. I think it was like, he was like, if I don't end up running for president, I will, I will, I may vote for Rand Paul or I will vote for him. I don't know. Either way. Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, you could vote for Gary Johnson, even if you know he's not going to win because, you know, you're voicing your philosophical opinion, but yeah, you could also try, you know, but um, if like, if you thought Rand Paul had a legitimate chance of winning. Well, you know, I think also too, I've got to, I've got to think that he has a legitimate chance of winning uh, Maryland as well. Rand you know Paul? what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Because I mean, it's like, w- whenever has a Republican won Maryland in a presidential race? I, I don't know. 
Uh, not in the presidential probably. race. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, Pro- exactly. You know, since I've been I alive. mean, so it's like if he doesn't have a shot in hell, anyways. You know, I, I could uh, I could vote for Johnson. It would be uh, just the same. I only I it'd be more impressive to get the Libertarian Party more numbers. I think. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we got some time. <laughs> yeah, plenty of time to. But wonder. yeah. Um. Uh, anyways, that that's even if you know Rand can make it past the. Uh, you know, Rand can make it past the primaries. You know, past and, the. Uh, and of course, you know that that's a big if. I hate to be a naysayer, and I hate to be like one of those person, one of those people saying, you know, because it, it it sucks. You know, I hear people say all the time, you know, like they said it about Ron, then now they're saying about Rand. You know, I, I like him. I um I I like everything that he says, but he'll never get elected. I just think it's well, not. It, it's it's like yeah, if everybody said, if everybody who said that actually voted for the guy, he would get elected. You know, and the things that you like about him, he doesn't pander. Oh, he doesn't pander, so he'll never get elected. Oh, well, that's a great reason not to vote for him, so <laughs> he'll never get elected. Right. You know, <laughs> it, you know it, I mean, it, it's really dumb. It's just like, listen to yourself. You know, don't you see that, you know, it, by like, you know, voting for the pander, you're part of the ongoing problem that we have every four years? You know, oh, why not start to be part of the solution? Yeah. Well, I mean, and if you're not going to vote for him because of that reason, just don't vote. <laughs> Why would you vote for somebody like w- so? You're gonna vote for Trump? Is no, that, yeah, you know? I, mean, I mean, dude, it's it's almost like it's more. But he's better than Obama. I mean, horse dude, ha- Haven't you ever talked to people? Like, that's, that's, that's what I was getting to, dude. It's almost more like it, it's like horse racing. You know, it's more about like picking the winner than it is about picking the best person for the job. You know, like I've actually right. There was actually a, a guy that I worked with one time, and he was bragging to me about like how he voted, how like every time he voted, he picked the winner. <laughs> you know what I mean, and it, it's just like, wow, dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> um, it, it's wow. You, so you helped choose all these assholes. Thanks, <laughs> really. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, like that's some sort of badge of honor that you can wear. Cool story, bro. Do you even lift? Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> so, mm. yeah. So, um, I guess Alex is going to grab something to drink or something. Uh, Alex, where'd you go, man? You went to go to go off to grab some Vagisil or? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet. I got all, all taken care of now. Everything's yeah, good. Yeah, Matt's got like an industrial supply of that shit. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So he gives it out at Halloween. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else we got on the fucking menu for today? Um, how about uh, this whole EPA dumping toxic waste into a river? It's in Colorado. In Colorado. Yeah, like um, uh, apparently, um, do you guys, are you guys, uh, you guys got the whole story of that, or? Yeah, um, let me pull it up real quick. But essentially, why don't, why don't you whip this story out? I'll just whip it all out. Um. So basically, they dumped a million gallons of orange mine waste into Colorado River. That's the headline on uh, Reason. But basically, they were trying to clean up some mines, um, which. I guess technically they hadn't gotten official approval, but they were working on it anyways. And as they were, like, trying to clean up these mines, they fucked up and just, like, released a million gallons of waste into the Colorado or into uh, Cement Creek. Yeah, and there's Which was feeding, like, which was originally feeding, like, a bunch of uh, reservoirs and, I think, water supply, but they managed to cut it off before it could contaminate that, at least according to them. Yeah, and also like one of our PRL brethren on Facebook, Jake Mills, who's a really cool dude. He's been with uh, the website probably since uh, right there at the beginning. He's actually even came up to my house before, all the way from like North Carolina, you know, to Baltimore to, you know, uh, hang out at a PRL show we had. You know, that's right. So, I met Jake years ago. Yeah, man, he's totally fucking awesome, and uh, he's actually living in Colorado now, and he posted an article that was put up on july 30th like a few days before the waste was dropped where you know this dude was basically warning that that the way that they were doing it like they were going to drop it you know so he was saying this was inevitably going to happen if they yeah exactly did like, what they were gonna do. It, it was it was predicted nobody listened and you know so uh that's pretty interesting right there and jake is actually talking like he's gonna write a article on it tomorrow we'll see if that happens that's but cool. um yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I told him that, uh, dude, I was like, Jake, you know, how come you haven't submitted an article yet? You know, it's been years. And he was like, oh, well, you know, I'm a busy guy. And he is, he's busy as shit. He works like 12 fucking hours a day. 
But um, I'm like, you know, it's cool, dude. He's like, it'll take a while. I'm like, dude, it'll take you like an hour. And I'm like, you know, we'll proofread it for you. And he's like, hey, right away, he's like, writing's my strong suit. So he should have something good for us, you know. All right. So that, that'll that be pretty cool. You know, we'll have a PRL author in Colorado. Uh, you know, apparently he's seen the Orange River in person. So we can look forward to that. Has he swam in it yet? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> he probably should. That's the true test. Yeah. So um, John Stewart recently uh, called it quits. So, like, uh, how do you guys feel about John Stewart? I mean, back in my, like, liberal days, I thought he was the fucking man. You know, like, I watched The Daily Show pretty much every night. You know, agreed with almost everything that was said or brought up and criticisms made. And that was during... That takes some balls to, like, be on this podcast and admit those things, dude. Hey, man. I'm a changed man now. Uh, I know. I'm but, uh, no, but the thing was, that was during... Bush's presidency, which, you know, when you have, you know, him being a liberal and Bush being a Republican, you know, he had he had no qualms about just tearing everything about that administration up, which was awesome. Yeah. Was, Low know. hanging fruit. So that was when John Stewart was was awesome. But, you know, as soon as Obama gets into office, that shit declined. Now, you know, there are instances where he did criticize Obama, so it's not as black and white as that. But. He still, you know, backed off on a lot of shit. And then, like, that one thing he did uh, with... Do you remember the thing he did with Peter Schiff? Where he made Peter Schiff look like a total asshole? Yeah, he cut up an interview. Which, yeah. come on, you're going on The Daily Show. Yeah, I mean, that's to be Peter expected. Schiff was dumb to do that. <laughs> yeah, But still, yeah. it's like, I get you're making a comedy show, but you can't just completely misrepresent someone's views like that and make them seem like a horrible person. You know? <laughs> Uh, it, it just seems <laughs> fucked up to me. Yeah, definitely. And then not do this. It was like a thing over minimum wage. <laughs> and, he, like, he just completely, they just completely, like, you know, cut up, you know, chopped up his, uh, his, what they taped of him and just made it sound like he was just a complete asshole. Yeah, like, they asked, uh, they asked the situation, like, what if, or is there any situation where someone could receive less than minimum wage? And he basically was like, well, if they volunteer or if it's just like he said or if they're like he, instead of saying like disabled or already he just said if they're retarded like it was kind of like he came off and he corrected himself but they used what he originally said right and they just painted him in like just like this crass yeah, i mean it just took it took everything he said out of context <laughs> yeah, exactly they, they chopped it up just like you said jared but yeah it was I, yeah that's that's where i i parted ways with the daily show at times but yeah did you guys see that um, that video we post on PRL? Uh, Reason TV made it, and it was like uh, top five reasons John Story's full of shit. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, that. I saw that as well. Yeah, yeah, like it was interesting to see, like you know, basically he's like he's ragging on the the veteran, the VA, you know, and he's talking about like the long wait times, you know, and, and how bad government does with healthcare, basically. But then and then he's campaigning for single payer. You know, they give the government more power over healthcare. Right. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. And uh, what else? He was ragging on vaxxers, but in 2005, he, like, helped break, like, the first liberal vaxxers. Yeah. Because, you know, the vaxxers, like, initially, you know, it, it did seem like it was more of, like, a, a liberal thing. It still is. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's still, I don't know. There, there's a lot of conservatives that are behind it, too. And yeah. Well, yeah. Like, liber no, I mean... I mean, I conservatives like uh, libertarians, libertarian conservatives, um, but not like there are some, and I don't want to paint like I don't want to paint like all libertarians in that light. But I, I think there's people on both sides of the aisle. But I think initially it was, it was like a huge left thing. So you know, John Stewart was going to be all about it, right. and he's going to give this guy props for coming on his show and, and spilling the beans to the nation, and uh, you know, just like praise this dude, and then then he's going to rag on like Jim Carrey, you know, a few years later. So. Well, that's but the thing I mean, you gotta you gotta attack the fringes because you don't want the fringes of like both political ideologies to start coming together. So he has to attack it like he was for it, and then against it, like blaming it on like oh it's conservatives, it's the radical right, you know that that like you said he's very inconsistent. Right. Yeah, but I, I mean, saying, yeah. when he's ragging on Kerry, you know, Kerry is somebody that's uh, I believe historically been uh, pretty left wing. I believe he supported Obama, and he's also anti gun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so. know if this was necessarily like a partisan thing. I, it was just an example of 
fl- I guess flip flopping. <laughs> yeah, flip flopping. But I mean, then Whereas, you can make I mean, the argument that you can you make know, the argument that you know he's learned more about it since yeah. then, and and now he has the stance that he has now. Yeah, I mean, I've you know and, I've changed my views on that shit. So, oh, well, on the Vaxer stuff. Yeah. Really? So where were you and where are you now? Um, I mean, I I never I would never say I was an anti-vaxer, but I was way more skeptical about it than I am now. Um, I mean, just reading the science and you know, <clears throat> and looking at the evidence that the anti-vaxers brought up, I don't I f- I find it wanting, and you know, uh, I don't think they have a leg to stand on with their arguments. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean I advocate forced vaccinations. Um, it's an interesting issue because, because I mean, I mean, if you, I mean, if we knew for sure that the vaccination was going to cure something or prevent it from spreading, and then you knowingly said, well, I'm not, I have this disease, but I'm not going to, or not that you had disease, but you decide you're not going to get vaccinated knowing that, knowing this information, because you just refuse to accept it for whatever reason, you get sick. And then you end up spreading that disease because just because you're vac- because as you, when you carry a disease, it, it also mutates. And also there's something called herd immunity that helps protect um, people that can't get vaccines. So by not getting yourself vaccinated, you lessen the herd immunity and you hurt those people. So like if you f- somehow it could be proven that you got people sick because you r- refuse to take the vaccine, that's sort of an act of aggression. <coughs> I mean, it's another gray area of the the nap, but I don't know. So I'm not saying I'm f- necessarily for force. Dude, vaccinations. we could, that could be a podcast in of in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, gray areas of the nap. Yeah. Oh, what do yeah. You think for like just like hardcore libertarians, dude. we could do that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there's that the, the nap. nap intellectual property. That's kind of. Um, yeah. I don't think so. Actually, I mean, but I mean, for I don't some know. people though, no, I mean, for I mean, you, it's not. For you, it's not. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. pro IP. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, uh, the, yeah, but I mean, they're. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If I mean, I don't know. Is, is there any? I don't like, know if that's a gray area. Like, it's either black or white. It's just some people think it's black and some people think it's white. You dude, know? the thing that gets me is like, and I know there's there's some. I don't understand how it is, but quote unquote people that identify as like quote unquote anarchists who uh, agree with IP, and it's like what? Yeah, that just seems confused. Well, if you just think of it as property, it doesn't seem that confused. Like like for an that's, anarchist? Well, that's the whole thing is because it's called intellectual like, property, which is a misnomer. Uh, how would an anarchist institute IP? I don't know. <laughs> that's why I'm not pro IP, but I mean, I don't know, I guess I guess you could ostracize people that choose to steal ideas from well, other people. Well, I mean, you, you could ostracize people. I think that's an answer to IP right there. I mean, it's basically like, is it is it um, property? No. I mean, but is, is it kind of, uh, is it like dishonest to like play a song and then, you know, like, say that you wrote it all and have it be a total ripoff? And I, I think I think people are naturally... But that also could be argued as being fraud. So that's the thing. I think a lot of the, ish- Whoa, the problems... Yeah. I think a lot of the problems that IP seeks to solve could just be labeled well, as I mean, fraud. Well, I mean, like, for, for instance, like the whole song thing, dude. I mean, I think it's natural. Like, if, if somebody writes a song and if you claim that, if you totally rip it off, you're, you're going to get ragged on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's natural, dude. And there shouldn't be a law against it. How would you have a law against it? You no. know what I mean? Especially I'm ta- in I'm an talking more society. Like, like, if you set up, like, you know, let's say you set up your own fucking Burger King and you put Burger King's logo on all your shit and just claim that you were Burger King, but you weren't, That's and someone went there thinking you were Burger King, and then found out that you weren't Burger King, they could te- technically accuse you of fraud. Because you're knowingly deceiving them into thinking that they're well, eating a Burger King burger, but you're yeah, not Burger yeah. King. Yeah, and, and I mean, th- that's totally fucking uh, dishonest, you know? And, I mean, honestly, I don't think... I'm not saying that maybe that we should lock these people in a rape cage. Like, I'm just I saying it is fraud, yeah, I mean, and however an anarchist society like, deals with fraud... Like, I think the market's going to have their own way of dealing with that. Right. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it, it's basically like nobody likes fraud. P- people are going to ostracize, you know? And, I mean, I would argue even if if you rip off of like a fucking, I don't know, like say like a Billy Joel song, you know, everybody's going to know you ripped off of it. And it, it, it's fucking, you know, people talk about it and it, it's kind of like it's it's going to be a little frowned upon, especially if, if it's totally obvious. Right. You know? And then, so that that's kind of one way to look at but it. But to play status but advocate, then, but, but what about smaller songs? 
I'm yeah, I'm getting to that, dude. Okay. Smaller songs, dude. <laughs> I would love it if somebody ripped off one of my songs, dude. Love it, dude. N- nowadays, especially in, in the time of the internet, it's easier than ever to say like, oh, see, I put this up on YouTube here. This two years earlier before your release date. You know what I mean? And yeah, if you it, can, it's yeah, been, if you have like the timestamp and you can prove it. Yeah, I mean, just YouTube. How hard is it to put your song up on YouTube? You right. Know, there's all sorts of like poor man's copyrights now more than ever on the internet. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, dude. So if you have this song up there and then some big artist like uh, records it, you know, it's definitely people are naturally they're going to ostracize once it gets out there. It's, you know, this big artist just gave you a bunch of publicity and you've got a bunch of people hearing your song who might not uh, who might not otherwise ever hear it. Yeah, and that's true. It could you're, go reverse, you're given the yeah. props for originating it. Right. You know? So they come and they check out more of your shit and find out, oh. This guy's a real deal. Exactly. How is that not a win-win? It's people are naturally shit. going to author, uh, sorry, ostracize that no matter what. You know what right. I mean? It, it's um, it, it's going to get you more exposure. And it, you know, like I would argue, like for you, you know, like intellectual property and music, it's probably only been around for like the less than the past hundred years. You know, and you know, prior to that, people would just you know, uh, quote unquote, rip off of each other's stuff, and they would take it and make it better. And music was like evolving vine on its own you know and uh i don't i I think that's pretty i think people are always going to make music i think artists have it something inside of them to uh, make art and i mean if you're not going to make music because you're not going to make like uh, a million dollars you're probably a douchebag anyways right i mean it's basically like like no matter what i'm doing like as an artist like i feel like i'm going to make music and art would be i mean that's a huge gray area of you know, I mean, how, who, who's to say, like, well, that was my idea, you know, if you just change it just a slight bit or just, you know, it's well, impossible I mean, to, to regulate that or to. I mean, like, I can speak as an artist and it's like, dude, like with with every like album that I've ever wrote, I, I can even go back to like, you know, just like specific songs, you know, like I, I can I, I could think about it and I could say like, well, yeah, this is similar to this, which I was listening to a lot at the time, you know. It, it might not be a, a, or a direct ripoff as far as melody, you know. There, um, there's definitely at least one song that I can think of that that's that that I wrote that um, on the first Ten Watch record that was uh, pretty similar to um, like a Naked Raygun tune. Oh no, sorry, not a Naked Raygun tune, a Peg Boy tune. Yeah, it was it was really similar. And then like one of my friends, one of my friends like heard it. You know, like after I like recorded it a couple years later, and he was like, "Yeah, uh, this sounds exactly like that Peg Boy song." And it's funny because I'd had that Peg Boy album since I was a teenager, but I, I never saw the similarity before to the two songs. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was when he said that it was it was the first time of me hearing it. Interesting. And I yeah. mean, it, it's basically it's like with songs, you know. There's like fucking what's there? There are like twelve fucking notes or something. Like I, I don't know a lot of like music theory. I just know like on the guitar fretboard, there's there's only twelve notes. Yeah, and when and you're you start playing, going to like octaves and shit. And so when I mean, playing songs, how many different songs can you write, especially with like with you know punk. pop songs, <laughs> or, right. or like pop songs? You're talking yeah. rock songs, right, dude? That's that's one thing about people say punk's so simple. Dude, how is pop music not just as simple? Oh, and, it is. And if you don't believe me, listen to a Me First and the Gimme Gimme's album. You know, they're playing all those pop songs. They're just making them punk. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sometimes you could argue they're doing it better. You know. So I mean, it's basically like pop songs, rock songs, punk songs, country songs, hip hop songs. You know, for the most part, the shit is like fucking two, three, four chords. Right. You know, and and all those chords can be u- reused and uh, almost made to be sound like, you know, pretty damn different in all genres. But at the same time, there's going to be similarities to like anything that you can think up, especially in the realms of uh, these, you know, more simple kinds kinds of music, you know. So, um, you know, how did how did anybody really Columbus anything, you know, when uh you know, music is like, uh, I feel like it's a, just a natural evolution. You know, one person, you, you know, you kind of like, you're kind of like rewriting your influences and then you're throwing your own spin on it. You know, music's kind of not where you take from. It's kind of where you take it. <laughs> where do you take it? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, name your sources. Dude, but just think about it. You know, it's like, t- take uh, guitar players, for instance, you know. So, I mean, you know, back in the day, you know, you had your old traditional blues guys and then um, you had uh, the birth of rock and roll. You had like, you know, Chuck Berry or like, 
you know, think about Chuck Berry's guitar playing, you know, it was so different from anything else that came at the time. And then you had like an evolution from like Chuck Berry to like, you know, like yeah, Marty Jimmy, McFly like, uh, taught him that. like Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin. And then, then you go to uh, th- then you go to like, you know, guys that today, you know, you've got like somebody like uh, Dragon Force or something or St- Steve Vai. Of, you, know, you know what I mean? It's, you know, guitar playing. It's basically, you know, standing on the shoulders of the people that came before you. You learn what they did. And whereas, you know, the kids that are playing today are going to do crazier shit 20 years from now. And with that being said, uh, the only of those guitar players that I named that I've ever really gotten into is Chuck Berry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm usually not a lot for wanking off on, on guitar. I guess that's the punk rock in me. Yeah. Keep it simple, but not simple. Yeah. So, I mean... I don't know. It, that's just like it, it's pretty interesting just to think about how you know music's always went on, you know, and why do people feel the need for musicians to be like to make more money than uh, plumbers, you know? And I mean, musicians like even without well, IP, think, even I without think... IP, musicians can make more money than plumbers, you know. Musicians still make uh, the most of their money, uh, m- most of their money, you know, playing shows, performing live. And, you know, there, there's going to be all sorts of ways that as musicians can uh, make YouTube. their money. Yeah, exactly. YouTube. Right. And then, uh, yeah, man. So I, I just, I, I'm just not convinced that IP is necessary. And I, I think, like, you know, in other fields, like uh, patents, you know, it, it's uh, it's definitely, it's it's just placing a monopoly on an idea. And it, it, it's really, when you do that, your monopolies, monopolies eliminate competition. So you're really, you're hindering the um you're hindering like the progress of t- technology right so yeah ip's uh which is not good <laughs> <laughs> shit sucks yeah and, and besides think about how many like awesome hip hop hip hop albums that could be made right now that aren't being made because you can't do samples you can and, do samples you just have to pay a lot of money for them well yeah but i mean you essentially can't do samples like you would want to do samples because you've got to pay a lot of money for them right so, I mean, and dude, I've heard some like sick ass shit with samples. Mm. And um, as a technology progresses, you know, we could we could be taking samples even farther in hip hop right now. Yeah. You know, but, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, that's I why know. it's dead. It's up. <laughs> All right, Nas. <laughs> that was Nas, right? I think and, so. And I mean, it's insane, too, because like a- anybody like somebody who's like makes a, a good sample of who if you do a good job of a sample. You know, people are going to hear that sample and think, "Wow, who who initially or who originally did this?" Oh no, definitely, man. Because I remember, uh, and you're going to help well, sell you some more that whole Robin Thicke thing. I was, yeah. Because how many people listen? How many like people people were introduced to Marvin Gaye? Because, because yeah. not be, and then because a lot of people were just talking about it. It was all over. Like, oh, he took that. Even like, you know, he took that from Marvin Gaye. So how many people were exposed to Marvin Gaye because people made that? You know. Right. How many people were actually introduced to like, oh wow, this is actual music, <laughs> right? Know? Because of some and shitty many, pop. And how many people just enjoy that song? Yeah, you know. I mean, I whatever, mean, dude. Like, I mean, it honestly, is I don't even think it was ripping off that hard. I mean, uh, you can was, argue, uh, but it was a little close. A little close. Yeah. It's kind of like eh, it was a little too. I I think a lot of people just. It was kind of like Bowie and like you know it was it 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 wasn't as close. As Vanilla Ice trying to defend that he took like Bowie's yeah, under pressure, but, like when he was, but, but you're taking it was like, a little close, a little close, right? But, but I mean, uh, you're talking about like a, I don't know, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. But even still, though, so how many, how many people like growing up, like we were like, I don't know, listening to Nice Vanilla Ice because of that shitty song, but then like years later, like, oh, that's David Bowie, and like you go down, and you're like. And your mom's like, oh, I have my David Bowie records. And, you know, you're exposed to like. Well, no, that was Queen, not David Bowie. Was it? Yeah, Queen. No, under it was pressure. under a pressure. Was it Queen? Or? Yeah, that's Queen. Okay, never mind. Whoa, way off on my samples. <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> but just how you go back with samples. Like, I remember my friend had, uh, like, going back to, like, hip hop. Like, you listen to a Tribe Called Quest record. And then you go back to where all those original samples came from. And you're just exposed to oh, yeah. amazing jazz and funk to like garage rock to like you know you name it like yeah and no, I uh, that, that was the beauty of like and that's all lost nowadays because yeah you, the ability to sample and be exposed to different genres of music but uh yeah you sure it was i'm sure it dude i will, was it it was I th- it was queen you're right it was you're queen right. man then who thief that bowie sample who am i thinking of then 
I don't know. Anyways, no, digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like it thieved. I mean, come on, it, it's it's sampling. Like, does anybody here like like? Can you cite a way that sampling is going to work out bad for the originator of the music? Not sampling, no. no. I mean, I guess you could make an argument for just ripping off a whole song. I mean, Run well, DMC. How? I mean, you, how? But I mean, I'm how, saying, how would it work out bad for the originator of the music? Uh, I mean, just you know, if someone just completely ripped off the song, it blew up, and then and then right. I mean, you gave it. No, you gave how, the how counterexample. Would it, how would it, to it work out bad? You gave the counterexample to it, and I agree with what you were saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying. I'm just saying how, even how more it, so with I sampling. Mean, so you, you can't name a name. You can't name a reason how it would work out bad for the originator of the art. I mean, only if people didn't bother to check out the original person. Um, well, if they didn't bother to check it out, they weren't checking it out in the first place. True. Very true. true. Yeah, true. I mean, and, maybe. And, I don't and know, basically, if it, dude, if one person checks it out because of this, that's one person that they didn't have. I mean, but if it had just blown up on its own, I mean, which then you have to question, well, why didn't it blow up on its own? Maybe it wasn't enough time. I, I mean, know. like, I like, mean, it really depends on the situation. Dude, but by ripping off this song, I mean, you're giving, I mean, you're giving that artist uh, more attention than they were having before. Right. You're you're giving them you're giving them if you even if just one person what hears about a, it you you're giving them one more yeah. person than they have before. You're exposing one more person to them to to hear it and form an right. opinion about it. But I mean with sampling it's like you're not even taking the whole song. You're just taking a portion of the song and just using that. Yeah, but I mean so I mean, I you're mean not if, even, if if you can't demonstrate why the whole song would hurt, why would a part of the song hurt? Well, that's what I'm saying, exactly. Yeah. I mean, come on. It, I mean, it's it's fucking insane. It's really like, when when you think about it, like people who make, uh, you know, people who have made music like thirty years ago or whatever, you know, who you, you could be sampling the shit out of, you know, and and uh, when you sample them, it might bring more people into checking out their albums. Yeah, you know, they should be really opposed to all this sampling bullshit. Like, they they should be I, offering uh, to let their shit be sampled for free. Have you ever heard of a, a guy named Girl Talk? Um, wait, he's the guy that samples a bunch of shit. Yeah, he does like mashups, but it's all just like it's not just like let me put this one, this whole verse on top of this, uh, rhythm or whatever or melody. He takes and like will take like four different songs, and take like maybe the vocals from one, the rhythm track from the other, and the bass line from another, and then like combine them together for like f- sixteen measures, and then switch to something completely different. And through him, like I discovered a whole bunch of different shit, like some rap rap songs that I hadn't really gotten into, you know, some classic rock stuff. Because he'll take from every genre. And so, then you just downloaded it all legal. Day. Well, he didn't. gave it away. <laughs> okay. He gave away his whole album for free online. No, I'm saying uh, the other stuff that you oh, discovered. Did yeah, you probably. <laughs> <laughs> See, I personally like. I actually, I'm an anti IP here, but I, I buy a lot of music. Well, see, I use Spotify now because it's m- way more convenient. I'm guaranteed. No, I'm not ragging on anybody who does. You know, right. I mean, it's, it's the music's going to get out there. You know, well, one, my thing one with way Spotify or the other. is like the whole reason why I never bought albums to begin with. I mean, I started downloading when Napster first came out, and so I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm in fucking sixth what were you, grade, like five years old. No, I was like eleven years old. Okay, so like I had no money to buy records, and like my parents didn't give a shit. So I was fucking downloading music and like hearing about all these different bands and like expanding my musical horizons. And, uh, you know, eventually, you know, when I got enough money to buy records, I, you know, I buy shit, you know, I buy vinyl, but, you know, I just always thought like CDs are just way overpriced, you know, like CDs would go for like 20 bucks at Best Buy or whatever. And I'd be like, that's, and then I heard about how much, you know, how much the money was not going to the artist, which kind of pissed me off. And like, I, you know, I understood like there were costs involved, but it just always seemed like record labels were ripping off the artists. So, you know, that sort of, like, didn't make me feel bad. But then when Spotify came out, and I know they're kind of ripping off the artists, too, but it's just way more convenient. You know, I'm guaranteed high-quality audio. I, you know, when shit, I can listen to it at work. Like, it's just, the thing is, like, they create, they finally created a service that's good, that's worth the money. So, I, you know, I use it. I mean, like, like, for me, like, uh, it's Napster. I wasn't, I don't know, what was that, like, 98, maybe? Yeah, that no. sounds right. Yeah, yeah. like like yeah. at the right time, at, at that time, you know, I wasn't very tech savvy. You know, like I had a computer and shit, but I don't know, like you know, still I, had I, dial up. Well, like I, I had dial up. 
yeah. at that point, you know, I was like 18 and I started uh, getting into music like hardcore when I was 11. And, you know, I was just like, you know, saving all my lunch money to buy tapes at the end of the week. You know, I go to the mall and buy a tape. And, you know, I, I was used to like, you know, wanting to have the artwork in my hands, mm. you know, from when I moved to like tapes to, you know, vinyl and like I just started collecting that in like 95 and then um, in, in CDs even, you know, I, I liked having the artwork in my hand. And it's like, and then uh, a couple years after Napster, I, you know, um, somebody put Kaza on my computer, and I think I downloaded like, oh, yeah, like I downloaded like wow. ninety songs, and everything that I downloaded was stuff like, uh, you know, the stuff where you like like two songs, but you don't want to buy the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was basically like, uh, you know, I can't afford the album. I wouldn't buy the album, but I wouldn't mind having these two songs. It was right. stuff like that. Yeah, you know, like any anything like. Anything worth buying? I mean, for for me personally, I've got to like the whole album. I, I want to listen, be able to listen to the whole album in oh, its yeah, entirety. Exactly. So, um, I'm saying I like my favorite. I've, I've always back bought. Then, I would buy their. CDs. I've always bought albums, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. I still have a disgusting collection of tapes. You know, CDs, a shit ton of vinyl. You yeah. know, and you know, so I like to support artists. You know, and uh, you know, I'm totally anti IP, and I am an artist. I've made made uh, albums and. You know, if uh, if you want to burn them, if you want to if you want to go right now and uh, you can go on punkrocklibertarians.com, you can download uh, the entire Post Freedom album and you can burn it for all your friends. I don't give a shit. It's free download up there. You know, it, it, that's great. Uh, you know, I made it because I want people to listen to it. Right. You know, and I, I feel like, you know, if you're a real artist, you know, that's what you're that's why you're making music. Yeah, exactly. So, um. Let's see here. Oh, let's talk about this uh, Arizona drug testing welfare recipients. Um, do is you that, know, a, do you is know that in the documents? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I heard about that. Apparently, they spent um, like one point seven million dollars on, and I believe I saw like there was an update. It might have been more. This is an anti media article. You can also find it on uh, punkrocklibertarians dot com. Um, the uh, yeah, they spent one point seven million dollars and. They caught one person. Nice. That was a good use of money. Yeah. I mean, do you think people wow. on well is, is that conservative? You know, is yeah, that conservative that's, with your that's, money? That's fiscally conservative, man. Yeah. I mean, and who's pushing for this probably? They're conservatives. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was it like Scott Walker's trying to get it in uh, Wisconsin or wherever the fuck he's at? Uh, I, I yeah, heard something about Yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the cost to prevent it. It's just oh my gosh! It's just it's just ludicrous. And what does it fucking this. matter if they are doing drugs? I guess they look at it as like, I mean, all right, well, I'm getting up every day to go to work, and you're just you know, yeah. Well, I mean, sitting yeah, here on a street with... corner drinking beers and smoking your marijuana while yeah. I'm off working. Well, I mean, like the the problem with just the welfare system aside. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, is it just because you're jealous because they get to do drugs all day? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, if they were using the, f if you could use food stamps to buy drugs, then I guess I'd okay, I. Okay, well, I, I guess I, I guess all right, I'm just going to throw devil's advocate out there. Okay, status advocate. Okay, status advocate. Okay, <laughs> but um, you know, maybe it's not status advocate. Maybe it's realist advocate. Okay, so maybe let's put it this way, dude. Say you you have a friend, you know, he's having hard times. Would you let him crash on your couch? Yes. Yeah. So your friend's crashing on your couch. And, you know, you, you come home one day and you find a heroin needle. Would you still let him crash on your couch? I mean, I'd try to get him help. So, I mean... I wouldn't, like, throw him out on the street. I mean, that's probably the worst thing you want to do to a heroin user. Okay, so he, he, he keeps doing it. At, at some point, would you want to get a heroin addict out of your house? I mean, yeah, I would... Yes. No, I wouldn't want a heroin addict, like, living in my house. You're right, but... It's not as simple as, like, pulling the plug on the guy. You know no, what I mean? It's not as simple I'm, as, like, oh, you're out, buddy, and don't ever talk to me again. I mean, you know? do you believe there's such a thing as enabling? Um, Yeah, if you – but I don't think, like, letting him crash on your couch is enabling, per se. I think I, – I think your obligation, then, is to just get him help if you're a good friend, you know? Or try to help him. Yeah, if he refuses to use your help and you do everything you can, then yeah, I mean, kick him out. 
but I mean, see, that's the whole thing with the welfare state is you don't have this like personal connection. It's just money getting dumped from the sky onto people, and then you know, what? No one's no one's helping them. No one's helping them get out of their situation. It's just here's some money to keep you afloat. It's I mean, not, you know, like, do you think it's a good thing to subsidize uh, drug addicts? I know what you're trying to do here, dude. <laughs> But you're putting it you're putting it in the wrong the wrong uh you you you're presenting it in the wrong way, I think. Am I? Like I said, you know I'm, I'm just saying. I, I'm not saying go out and buy him heroin. Dude, I, that was a <laughs> status advocate, dude. I don't know. Or maybe I, maybe saying, there's some sense to it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean it definitely doesn't make sense to spend one point seven million dollars to catch one drug user. No. no, that's for sure. Yeah. So so do they test every welfare recipient, or was it just like they picked a handful of people? I mean, I gotta believe there's more uh, than for, like for one point seven million dollars. I would hope that's a lot of people, but I, mean, I would no, think that there'd be unless more they than went to like the governor's like best friend who charges like a whole bunch of money and they both split it. That seems likely. <laughs> yeah, they, I'm they, just surprised. They, I mean, I think if you took the general population that isn't on welfare and you drug tested them, you'd get more than one person out of. A huge amount, you know. Yeah, it could just be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, it kind of it baffles me that they only got one person, but who knows what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah. I I, I hear you, but at the, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not justifying it at all. No, I think it's a waste of money, but I think the welfare system is also a waste of money. So. Yeah, I mean. Mostly, at least. It's, I don't I don't know. I mean, like it's it's tough to say. I'm I'm not sure if there's uh, like ever been a study as far as uh. You know, like, I mean, they're undeniably a lot of people in it who need it. I, I think, you know, well, I, I, th- I think I'm not saying there shouldn't be any sort of like s- s- uh, social system in place. To oh, help I understand. Catch and, people. I'm just and, talking yeah. about like the status welfare system. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem, my problem with it, of course, probably your same problem with it is, uh, you know, people are forced to pay for it. Yeah. You know, people shouldn't be forced to pay for anything. And then I think, you know, because people are forced to pay for it, um, be, because it's run by the state, it's also abused. I, and I think inefficient. You, well, yeah, and, and inefficient, you know. <laughs> and, and then it starts to, like, blur where people think it's, like, a right. Like, they actually have a right to that or they're entitled to that. Yeah. You know, so it creates, like, over generations, it's created this mentality where oh, I have a right to this or I'm entitled. And it's, no, you're not. Yeah, and then, you know, like, the end result of that is Greece. Right. Is Denmark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so we've talked about jury... The, oh, fuck, I can't talk today. We've talked about jury nullification before on this podcast. Uh, but there's a recent news story of some jury nullification advocates getting charged with a felony for dropping knowledge on people. Uh, they were standing outside of courtrooms, Matt? Yeah, apparently um, this dude was standing Court outside houses. of a courthouse and uh, he got charged with multiple fa- felonies for telling people about jury, n- jury notification. And, you know, jury notification. What is, what is, how do they, what is the felony charge? I, yeah. Um, like, is uh, it, <laughs> I mean, I probably should have looked that up, but. Yeah, I probably should have too. It's just. It's uh, probably just some bullshit, like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's in the document. The thing, I mean, you, you see it like and that. you know uh, that's some bullshit right yeah. there. You know, what could the charge possibly be? Well, the inter- like, because the interesting thing about jury nullification, and this was actually an article I saw on, of all places, the Libertarian Republic. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, I swear. <laughs> sometimes, like, I see articles that um, that sound really interesting, and I'm about to click on it, and I see Libertarian Republic, and I'm like, uh, I'm not going to get me again. Yeah. <laughs> Like this one was actually not that bad. It how many advertisements did you have to? How many advertisements you have to click through to, <laughs> yeah. to actually read said article? I'm not, I'm not downplaying advertising. You know, we've got some advertising, and it helps make a couple bucks. Helps pay, for but it our, doesn't like pay for you know our web hosting and everything. But it doesn't um, interfere with you reading the content. Exactly. I mean, I even know. used to have an article or an ad that would be located in the middle of the article, and just after like a month, I was like, I just, I just don't like that. I just I want people to read the whole fucking article, and then if you want to click the ad at the end, click the ad at the end. Yeah, dude, you know? that's what I said the first time I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I, I was like. Oh, I mean, well, I was annoying. just looking at like what other people do, and 
that's apparently a very effective place re- yeah. placement, but it's also it just it, I don't uh, yeah exactly I didn't yeah like but it. I mean at the same time you know I'm not like it's that doesn't bother me as much because like I, I found that like you know there are some websites that do that I believe like Free Thought does it and Anti Media do it and I love those websites like I love those websites to death I, I think they're like the coolest websites out there the, the, um, uh, Anti Media never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not all about some of their shit, but yeah. Well, they I have mean, a lot of they have a lot of cool shit. Libertarian well, Republic is like literally clickhole though. When you go to that site. Yeah, but I mean, this was actually yeah, it's, not I, a I bad say article. It's worse than clickhole. Libertarian Republic. Is no, like, clickhole is like, the best site on the internet. Like Libertarian Republic should be called Libertarian Glory Hole. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, oh, I guess you know every now and again you find. A Dude, fucking what if we made that interns, website? Did you just spoof like Libertarian Republic and it was called Libertarian? Cool <laughs> Dude, we should totally do that. Just, You're a, so we'll have it up tomorrow. <laughs> like, but uh, seriously, dude, I think I might just be really blazed, but that could be a very good idea. Nah, I think it'd be he a also idea. has a site called Liberty Viral. Ew, that sounds like sure a where he basically just tries to make clickbait. I, I think he might have taken it down, but I remember him posting like a shitload of articles from it where he was just, just literally like trying the same strategy. Yeah, just literally just that's so stupid. But anyways, so this article was well, not, but, but not, I mean, like even at the same time, I'm going to play like Austin Peterson's advocate, you know, or devil's advocate, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's basically objectivist. Dude, advocate. I mean, if clickbait, you want to click on it, people will click on it. And if it introduces somebody to the ideas, you know, he's done a service. And Fair I enough. mean, there are I mean, I haven't met too many of them in person. Yeah, but or, I think it turns off. I mean, there are people on the Internet that, that dig Austin Peterson. Austin Peterson has his uh, his community. I don't think any of the, any of them are listening to us, but I, I could be wrong. <laughs> but you know, it, um, you are right in. Fucking explain why. Yeah, <laughs> comment on this article. Info or the, at the, punkrocklibertarians.com. Or yeah, comment. or write an article about it. You know, why do you like Austin Peterson? Like, can seriously, if anybody like, please write an article and tell us why you like Austin Peterson. That, <laughs> yeah, that would but be for every, <laughs> but for every like one person that that strategy. Why should be like Austin Peterson's secretary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for every one person that that uh you know model um op- like opens the eyes to someone who's never been exposed to it those that have are going to be like don't go to that fucking site go to like all these other sites so it's kind of like hindering him in the long run just because like he's pissing off like an entire movement and we're gonna like direct people to go like nah, I, I don't mean, go well, there dude, Check if, out this if, you, site. if you look at his like alexa rating i mean he's he's pretty up there dude he's like I, I gotta say, like, uh, like, I mean, capitalist wise, I mean, he's making some money and he's obviously like exposing some people, um, and you know, some people do like him, dude. I don't know. So, Haters are gonna hate. Some people do like him. I want to hear from some people that like him. I want to hear like your opinion. Like, why do you like him? I don't know. Maybe I've, I've shamed Austin, Austin Peterson's uh, people like too much to comment. Like I said, they're probably not even listening. But yeah, if you submitted an article, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. But uh. Yeah. So. So what were we talking about? We were talking about <laughs> an article I read on on his site mm-hmm. about jury nullification, and the guy was basically saying jury nullification doesn't. It's not tech. It, it doesn't technically exist. Like it's not something that is legal, but it's not illegal. It's like this weird another gray area, where, like, you're not supposed to. Like, you're supposed to vote, when you're in a jury, you're supposed to say whether someone is guilty or innocent based on the evidence. You're not supposed to just say guilty um, because you disagree with the law, which is what jury nullification is. But there's nothing they can do to you. There's no there's no repercussion for it. It's just not legally endorsed. You get what I'm saying? Like you're Like, you're technically not supposed to do it, but if you do it, there's no repercussions. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, t- I totally yeah. get that. Which is awesome, um, and it's something that everybody should do for nonviolent criminal offenses. Here, here. Um, Did you agree, Alex, or are you still on your phone? I'm totally texting. on my phone texting, are you, are you sexting some dude. Are you sexting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got any I'm dick pics? Sending some <laughs> dick <laughs> pics <laughs> to this girl, but um, snap uh, me, bro. Dude, no. that should be like the title of this episode: dick pics. Dick pics. Dick pics. What do you think, dude? Yeah. Well, let me jot that down because like, I won't remember. Yeah, yeah. Jot it down. Dude. There's clearly not a market for dick pics, but guys seem to flood the market with dick pics. See that? So. That's how that's how we come up with those genius folks. Yeah, but um, because I, I know our tens of listeners are always wondering. Should I put an exclamation point or a smiley face after that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe um, two exclamation points. 
We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. Jury nullification, yes. I agree with everything Jared had to say about that. So, I think we talked about it last time, but none of us have been on a jury. Exactly. I don't think we, we think ever will. Because we think we're on a list of some type. <laughs> Although, I have an anarchist friend out in L.A. who um, who who got called up for jury duty. And I was like, dude, that's awesome. You can possibly exercise your jury nullification rights. But he's like, yeah, but I also am getting fucked out of work, like, super hard. That's like, he, he does, like, he works... Um, what does he do? He works in like with like uh, film, like he does like uh, like production work or something like that. Uh, okay, so, so it's like he's ki- you know it's it's not like a nine to five where oh let me just put in for like the afternoon off. It's like yeah, it's if like, he can't be there for the shoot, like shit's gonna hit the fan, you know. So like schedule's totally out of his hands. Right. So in that sense, it's like fuck, man. Now I'm being like, com- you know, com- forced by the state to show up to this fucking building to sit on this fucking bench and listen to a f- an asshole in a robe say some shit. So you wonder <laughs> you wonder if that's another list too. What's that? I don't know. Like, well, one <laughs> your political beliefs, but also like your ability to go so, you know. <laughs> so they just fuck you in the ass. <laughs> yeah. So like regardless, you're going to get a jury pool that's going to be like one fucking clueless or be like Well, dude, I told God, him f- what the fuck? Why am I here right now? I told you him know? to show up and do like that one uh that one family guy episode where he's like it's like, remember that time Peter got out of jury duty? And he's just sitting there, and he's like, whole lot of honkies in here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do that, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, yeah, I've never been, never been summoned, never. Matt, have you ever? No, I've never been summoned. And you've been a registered voter, right? For I mean, that's how they do it in Baltimore yeah, County, I mean, right? Yeah, and I was a registered, you know, when I registered to vote, I think it was in around... It was in around like 2000. I think it was like shortly after like uh, George Bush got elected. Um, I registered as a uh, libertarian, and um, you know, so I, I kind of think maybe that has something to do with it. You know what else is weird? Every time I go to vote, you know how there's like they give you like uh, like they give you choices or, like you're registered. Uh, apparently, it seems like I'm registered twice: once as a Republican and once as a libertarian. Instead of just switching me just to a Republican when I switched to Ron Paul. Why do you what, why do you think that? I mean, it's it's like because when I when I say my name, they there's like there's always like two different options, and it's like uh, they're both me, but no, I'm a registered Republican now. <laughs> so basically, that's this, funny. Be, between the <laughs> so three, you could theoretically register as a Republican and a Democrat, just no. I mean, both, it, both primaries. I mean, <laughs> it, I mean, it's it's like my name's in there twice, and I, I kind of wonder like are, are, maybe some. Why is my name in there twice? Are they like taking my name, my other name that's left over, and then voting for somebody else? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like I'm just. Dude, I should I'm, go in. It is vote as. Or, or maybe vote. they want to. Maybe they want to leave that in there so Dude, they I should can vote so as they your they Republican can, alter ego. <laughs> well, maybe they want to. No, well, I mean, or maybe they want to leave that in there to uh, eliminate me from jury duty. I don't know. I mean, granted, like, okay, I've been tech, I, I don't know, I guess registered to vote for like almost 16 years. Now, granted, eight of which I was in the Air Force, so eight years. Matt, how many years? Jared. So statistically, one of us should have been at least maybe summoned. I mean, you know? does everybody so get think, summoned like once in their life? I mean, I I know I people know, in the I, city I that have been summoned multiple been times. Summoned multiple times. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's bizarre. And it's like not once. So I don't know. I mean, there must be a list. Is it like a random number generator? Or is it just like? They have lists and they. I don't even have the documents on this, so I need to <laughs> find these goddamn documents. If someone knows the documents. If anybody listening. out there has the documents, please, <laughs> please post a comment on this. <laughs> post. <laughs> oh man. Uh, we, I think we were gonna talk about a uh, puppy side. Mm. Yeah, dude. I kind of made a little comment about that earlier, but you guys didn't take my lead. But we can circle back. Yeah, it's. Basically, I'm just pulling the article up right now. So puppy side is when someone kills a dog. Normally a police officer. Yeah, I think when we talk about it, it's mostly cops. <laughs> I mean, because really, who else besides cops shoot puppies? Uh, serial killers. Or future serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huh. That's Coincidence? Very, that's very telling. <laughs> yeah. Very telling. Yeah. See, I'm trying to pull this up. I'm trying to pull this up. (laughs) (laughs) It's 
basically this woman intervened, correct, Matt, with uh police officer came onto their property. Okay, yeah, this is in uh, Topeka, Kansas. And you, if you want to read about this, you can go on punkrocklibertarians.com. We posted the article. It was aggregated by the Free Thought Project. And uh, we posted this, um, I believe, on, like, Saturday night. And uh, so basically this, um, you can see in this video, this this cop is going in this, this backyard, apparently because, like, an alarm went off on, like, the back patio door. And he walked, he, and uh, I guess he got called uh, for, um, to go check on the alarm. And then he, he gets there, he's checking out the door, and this, like, little dog starts barking. It was, like, a 26-pound uh, dog. You know, not a, not a very large dog at all. And, you know, you, you can hear the video. It doesn't sound like a particularly scary bark. It sounds like somebody's, like, little pipsqueak dog. Yeah. And then, so the dog runs, and it's charging towards the cop, barking, and the cop puts two rounds in the dog. <laughs> It's, I, I'm just trying to imagine, like, dude, how much of a pussy, I mean, it's this really small dog. Yeah. Even if it was a, a big dog, I mean, don't you think you just get the fuck out of there, like, take a few bites and leave? I mean, isn't it better than just, like, fucking killing somebody's pet? Or, I don't know, maybe just, maybe just try to be a human and, like, you know, not be threatening and call the dog over. Yeah, because, I mean, it, like, it's interesting, you know, people or maybe point why, out. Or maybe people point out, you so know, this like, was a lady's male like, men don't kill dogs, you know. The gas yeah. and electric company guy, he doesn't kill dogs. You know, so many people, well, you know, door-to-door salesmen, if there are any more, that they don't kill dogs. <laughs> Why was this cop in this lady's backyard? Like, okay, the alarm went off. Why didn't he go to the front door and say... Uh, because apparently it was an alarm for the back patio door. An alarm for the back patio door. So he had to walk into the backyard so he where didn't, the dog was. No, so I the got dog that. was, like, fenced in. I got that, but I'm saying... Does he not contact the owner to say that he's coming over? Did the owner know he was coming over? Like, um, I don't know about that, but I can and tell if it you, was somebody like, right bra- after he shoots the dog, the lady goes out. The lady goes outside, and he's he's like, "Ma'am, I shot your dog. I'm sorry. She was charging towards me. I thought she was going to bite me." And I mean, the whole time, like uh, at least as much of the video I, I listened to, the, the cop seemed to be he seemed to be very sincere. He seemed to be very respectful. The lady wasn't giving him too much shit from from what I saw either. She seemed to be pretty understanding of it, especially for a person who just, <laughs> you know, who's standing there holding her dead dog. Um, but she was, you know, of course, she was really upset. And this cop says stuff like, oh, I know how it is. You know, my dog, if you know how it is, why would you have shot the dog? You're, you're a dog person. You're admitting to I owning just, a dog. I'm still you're, trying to you're wrap my head around. If your dog was shot, it would be like a member of the family dying. So, you know, I mean, how, how could you do this? It just seems like so fucking evil. Yeah. I mean, this is sort of besides the point, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around. So y- so he's going to check on this alarm, and there's a dog there. Obviously, that dog belongs to the person whose house the alarm is going off at. Yeah, exactly. Why would you fucking shoot the dog? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's not like it's not like a robber was there, and he had, like, a pit bull, and he's like, get him! And he just let <laughs> the pit bull go, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like, how often does this happen? And, you well, know, it happens all the time. But normally, exactly. but normally it's under like a false raid, you know, like a like a false uh, alarm drug raid, and they just instantly they just burst them through the door. The dog comes running, and they kill it. Actually, like it happens for all sorts of reasons, dude. Yeah, there's it happens been, there's for been all, been all sorts quite of reasons. Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not just people want to say like it's, it's just drug dealers' dogs. It's it's not just that. And even if it was drug dealers' well, dogs, I'm not even I saying mean, drug dealers' yeah. dogs. I'm saying like false alarms. I mean, <laughs> either even if it was, you know, I mean. It's, I mean, dude, you watch this video, man. It's like I don't see how anybody could not, you know, um, not say that it's fucked up. Yeah, you know what happened to the cop? Um, yeah, nothing happened to him. I I believe like the police chief said something like they're gonna um after this happened and after headlines are made because you know what's happened before, but after the headlines are made, it's basically they're gonna look into uh police policy about what to do when uh you know stuff like that happens with dogs but um he said at, at the time this officer was not um guilty of breaking any policy hmm. well at least they're gonna look into it yeah, yeah they're <laughs> gonna do it they're gonna we're gonna investigate ourselves oh no, no i mean they're ourselves. not gonna look into it they're yeah. not gonna look into this incident because i mean they already did and, and they said that there was no wrongdoing and you know maybe there wasn't legal r- wrongdoing but you know it's been said before, if, you know, the state is like uh, your litmus test for right, you know, you're going to be pretty disappointed. Right. Not only that, but just you killed a dog, like, really? And do you really want this person on your supposed police force, you know? 
You want this guy yeah, going yeah, into but the thing potential? Is, like, he's following. Like the problem, the problem does lie in the police policy itself. Because if the policy was don't kill the dog, would he have killed the dog? Maybe not. Not to say that he's off the hook, because you know we're all um, our own moral actors. But you know the the larger problem is police policy. You know. Um, and it all just kind of trickles down like, like a sh- like a shit s- sandwich. Um, so uh, what are we at there, Matt? Yeah. Keep keep rolling with this. Yeah, it's not bedtime yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, dude, whatever, man. Um, so the anniversary of uh, Hiroshima. Yeah. Um. W- so w- what do you guys think about that? You know, seventy years ago, one day this week, uh, Hiroshima happened. What what do you think? Do you think it was uh, something, you know, because a lot of people say it was necessary for the United States to win the war. A lot of people say that it it prevented, um, you know, more possible deaths. You know, I actually actually I read an article this week. I think a true activist put it up where, you know, they were just uh, they were just quoting a lot of people that were important at the time who, um, you know, didn't believe that we needed to drop the bomb, that the war would have ended anyways. That, you know, it was it was pretty fucked up that we did it. But, you know, it seems like now in history is regarded to a lot of people as, like, necessary. And it has been for my entire life. People seem to, like, kind of just assume that it was necessary. You know, they, they just buy into, uh, you know, the I guess the the history books, you know, which were written yeah. by the winners. Right. Yeah. Well, even uh, I think Eisenhower. I think Eisenhower was quoted after. Yeah, totally. You're he right. He was against it. Yeah, Eisenhower was against it. Yeah. He also warned us about the military-industrial complex. <laughs> right, shocker, so. Um, I mean, I guess it goes, I mean, you can't really talk about that without talking about whether the war was justified in the first place. You know? True, true. Um, I mean, obviously, something had to be done about Germany. I don't know, like, I'm not I'm not really a history expert. Um, I'm definitely not, like, a military history expert. Mm-hmm. I mean, I find it interesting. Um, I've heard the arguments for, you know, how, yeah... A whole bunch of people got killed by the bomb, but it may have saved countless more lives yeah, than yeah. it took. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, see, that's the whole problem with war is like you, y- it becomes this like dehumanizing, um, I guess utilitarian kind of thing, where it's like, well, if we can save more lives yeah. by taking these lives, then that justifies taking these lives. Yeah, but something you can like. But you know, and then you're just talking about mass masses of people. You're not talking. You're not thinking about the individual. That's now this guy. In order to save other people, this guy now has to sacrifice his life, even though he didn't do shit. It, like you know, like do you think it's ironic that the first country to use a nuke is now the main country telling other people that they can't have them? Well, yeah. I mean, it's a bunch of countries, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, nobody wants someone else to have a nuke because then that takes away your leverage, <laughs> you know? I mean, if everyone has nukes, well, you know, you just don't have that option, <coughs> that that threat available, you know? So, I mean, that's not surprising, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I definitely don't like the idea of dropping nukes on people for whatever reason, especially innocent civilians, so... What about you, Alex? What do you think? Um, I don't think it was necessary. I think it was just uh, an excuse to enter into the Cold War. Um, you know, it was basically we knew to enter into the Cold War. Well, yeah, I mean, we had to do something to scare the the Russians. So I think dropping a nuke, you know, that basically, oh. you know, cause we were the first to use it, and then you know after the surrender of Japan, I mean, we basically that was like. After that happened, that was basically, you know, entering into the Cold War with communist Russia. So I think that I, I was... I don't think I ever realized that the Cold War was that long. Yeah. I mean, that's when... I mean, so... So I, the Cold, Cold War was like 19, like, was it 45 through like the 90s? Or was it 43? Well, I'm, I mean, some... I mean, I, I'd say that was the start of it I mean, right the then 90s, and there. 80, sorry. Well, 90s, 89 was when the wall, col- wall came down in mm-hmm. Germany, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it was just a, you know, just like Eisenhower warned us, the the military industrial complex. So, you know, that basically started the arms race, you know. So, huh. I think maybe, you know, so they'll 
they'll never say that. So they use the justification of that, like, well, you know, we would have had to invade the Japanese mainland. We would have lost hundreds of thousands of more, uh, you know, American lives. So we needed to do this. So to kind of spin it as humane. <laughs> so it, to, I don't know. That That's kind of my thoughts on it. I don't think it was necessary at all. But, you, but you still, not only did you kill all those people, but then you have the nuclear radiation after the fact. Yeah, I mean, it was it's horrible. I mean, it's... I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I just think it's, uh, yeah, just like what Matt said, the hypocrisy of us that we're the only ones to actually drop, not once, but twice, uh, to actually use it, a nuclear weapon that we're the, the world police and have to tell other countries that, you know, you, you can't do that or, you know, as a, you know, just like you said, Jared, it's a deterrent. So, right. <laughs> but anyways, but, uh, we like our military industrial complex. Yep. I think that's all we got on the list, man. Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. And uh, make sure to check us out on Minds.com. Um, I'm going to be posting some articles on there that I'm not posting on Facebook because, you know, we get about – we a lot of times get about uh, like over a dozen done per day. We don't post them all on Facebook. So um, we're going to start posting uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, more exclusive stuff on there. So if you want to see it, you know, you might have to just go to the website and uh, or go to minds.com. And, uh, you know, Minds has uh, encrypted messaging and it also gives 100 percent reach. And, you know, they don't spy on you like Facebook does. So, you know, it's basically it's the libertarians wet dream come true when it comes to social media. So, you know, we, we just got to we just got to get more people over there. Got to get more people in that orgy. And by the way, Jared Schneiderman is bottomless on Minds. So Ooh. there's there's that, too. And then, uh, as always, you know, we, um, you know, we're always accepting submissions on the website, so do it. And also sign up for the newsletter. Should be one coming down the pipe, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've started the newsletter because, you know, we, we've grown pretty large on Facebook, but uh, not everybody's seeing our posts, you know. So if you want to keep in touch, you know, you can, uh, you can click to... Uh, uh, basically, how, how do they do it on Facebook where you see like every single post a page post? Um, it's like you go to Is it get notifications, right? Yeah, get notifications. There's a drop down and you click something. I don't know. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you, I mean, if you, if you get on there and look around, you know, <laughs> yeah, get up all so, in there. There's also now there's a sign up button on the Facebook page for the newsletter. And uh, by the way, we are also on Twitter. Yes. So. You know, you can look us up on Twitter. Um, you can look us up, up on Google+. Plus. We're also on Tinder. <laughs> Are we on Tinder? I thought you said you put us on Grinder. But you got a match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Grinder. I forgot. Okay. Dude. Yeah. So anyways, um, until next time, take it easy, guys. Live free. That is shed. Drenching the flags of the tax bombs in red. Was it by a few at the expense of the many? So did the gods and the machine. We can't justify killing by economic gain. For God, country, and democracy. You can put freedom in dead point in a fun land. We support the troops that bring them home. I believe the joke. We'll do the best for you. And I believe that we. Have the power, have the power I hate the state And I know I'm a slave We can make the break Break the power, break the power Society of individuals Nothing more than not interference With natural rights With a virtuous person fully comprehends The non-aggression principle The violence of the state becomes Absolutely!